Hello YouTube, Zmanzilla here, and I'm going to be looking at something from the Xbox One Creators Collection today. This is Space Cat. So a couple things you should know about Space Cat. It was actually created by one of the folks that helped implement the Creators Collection feature on Xbox One. And for those who aren't familiar with the feature, basically it's like the old XBLI from the Xbox 360, the, uh, the indie market. The idea is that anybody can make a game for this and try and sell it or not sell it, whatever they like to do, and you can download it and play it. On your Xbox One. Now, a um, couple things. Um, I'm recording this voiceover in post because I had some issues trying to stream this on Twitch. You can't use the Twitch app on your Xbox One directly to stream these games. I tried it with two different games, this and Whispers in the Dark. Um, I had a little more success with Mixer. Um, there's some other things going on with that. In any case, in order to bring you more of these games going forward, I'm going to have to do a little bit of experimentation. But let's go ahead and talk about Space Cat here. Um, again, it, it was created by one of the folks that to implement the new uh, the new feature, the, the new uh, Creators Collection feature for Xbox One. And essentially, it is Star Fox. I mean, it, it, I mean this, the, no review of this game is going to get very far without mentioning that it is basically Star Fox. So I'm going to show you some footage here uh, of me playing it. You're going to see it's very Star Foxy, although it uses a lot of the sort of voxel-based uh, you know, assets that actually, if, you, it, you know, if you're like me and you played a lot of XBLI games, um, then you'll recognize the style. A lot of folks... Uh, that do these games do like to do them in the voxel style and I, I dig it you know I mean I, I get it you know it's, it's certainly not you know you know the super duper polished things that we're all used to but it doesn't have to be you know if it's a fun game to play it doesn't matter necessarily what it looks like and you know that brings us to the question is this a fun game to play and with my experience at least it's sort of a resounding Eh, you know, not bad. Um, so the sort of the, the the problems I was having with it were the controls do feel a little clunky. You know, if you if you sort of look at the way the reticule moves when the the plane moves, you can see it's just a little bit jerky, and there is a bit of a frame rate thing going on there. I want to say it's running about you know twenty to thirty. Uh, frames per second. I obviously I don't have a way to measure that, but you know it it, it is a, a noticeably lower frame rate than some of the more polished games. And you know the thing is you got to make allowances for that. We're talking about you know a you know a, more, a much more indie. You know we're talking about folks that are maybe you know single developers or small teams, uh, hobbyists, things of that nature that are that are trying to just get these games made and put onto the creator collection. So you know we can be a little more forgiving of things like you know lower frame rates and stuff like that. Uh, that said, um, I, I don't care what level of programmer you are, if your game's controls feel clunky, they feel clunky, and that's just all there is to it. I mean, there's it's really hard for me to justify powering through a game experience if the controls are fighting me. And I won't say that the controls are necessarily fighting me here, but there's some really weird sort of decisions. Like, for example, there's sort of a, at the beginning, there's sort of a spoof about tutorials, and hey, can we do a quick, you know, uh, learn how to do things? And there I am trying to learn how to do things. Uh, it doesn't tell me what any of the buttons do, and so i got to kind of figure it out on my own. Now, fortunately, the controls are pretty simple you know there's a button for you know the the do a barrel roll thing which uh, if I recall correctly is the right trigger and then you shoot your laser using the a button and it's one of those one press equals one shoot things so you have to actually hammer the button to sit there and, and shoot all of the the, the baddies uh, as far as like you know the, the, the how accurate it felt I mean I, I really felt like I was kind of struggling a little bit at least at first to kind of figure out you know how to how to get any sort of accuracy out of it, but it you know it grew on me, and the game really does have enough of those like Star Fox elements where you know it, it is fun for what it is. I will say this. The Star Fox elements are pretty much the best thing this game has going for it, to be honest. I mean, you know, the, a lot. I, I find that I can forgive a lot of the, you know, the sort of things that I would normally poo poo about this sort of a game experience because I'm basically playing Star Fox on an Xbox One. And, you know, it's fun for that. And, you know, it's, it's certainly a simplified, sort of more broken down experience. You know, and by broken down, I mean like simplified, not that it, it doesn't work. I, I will say this the game is functional. You know, it's very, you know, very functional. Uh, you know, there's good player feedback in it. For example, when you're shooting enemies, you'll notice that 
you know, you get kind of the glow and stuff like that from from shooting the enemies, and you know, there's a little bit of force feedback as well, if I recall from from using the controls, and you know, all of that works very very well. I think some of the downsides of it uh, of the control scheme, at least, is that I f I felt at least in some of the areas where we were expected to sort of dodge obstacles, and again. It's the same problem I had with the original Star Fox, which is it's very difficult to get any sort of depth perception going on if the camera is not shifting from side to side to give you a, a, just a glimpse of that third dimension. And this game does that. It, it doesn't really, it doesn't give you much of a glimpse of the third dimension at all. And so it's really hard to tell when something's flying at you, you know, what how relatively close it is to you. Um, there, there is, for example, like one boss that shoots these like sort of giant blobs of energy at you, uh, and you know it's kind of hard to tell you know because all you're seeing is just sort of a growing circle so you can't really tell how close it is to you you don't have any sort of relative idea from the size how big it is so that's that feels a little weird uh, all of these are things you can easily get used to though and so you can enjoy the game that way and then the other thing to keep in mind is the price point which is it's free you know so it's a free game and so basically you're playing a free Star Fox clone uh, again on your Xbox one which is pretty awesome so, I mean, there's really nothing to complain about there. It's, uh, you know, as a as a game experience, it is pretty solid, you know, and it's, it's definitely worth checking out if you've got yourself, a, you know, an Xbox One and you're just looking for something free to do. So if you're not familiar with the uh, creator's collection section, uh, what you do is you go to the store, you know, you know, the store section of the Xbox One, you go to Browse Games, and then there should be a little tab. It's called Creator's Collection. Uh, it's uh, just right underneath sort of the main big picture area there. You click on that, and you're going to see a bunch of games that were made by, you know, indie folks, single developers, that sort of thing, you know, and you know, many of these games right now are free. Uh, they're not offering a whole ton of games right now, but, uh, you know, the games that are there, many of them are free. Uh, in fact, I want to say right now, most of them are free, and there's a couple that cost money, but, you know, my experience from the uh, the XBLI days at the very least, and uh, I'm going to be exploring this more as I do more coverage of the Creators Collection, is that the, you know, the, the, the games tend to be, you know, priced on sort of a, you know, budgetary kind of thing, and I'm hoping they retain the thing that they did with the XBLI. BLI where you can you know, you can do a free 20 minute demo of any game before you buy it, um, which I find is probably going to be very instrumental for trying to do reviews, you know. But, you know, all of that considered, uh, you know, it was a great feature before. I want to check it out more now. And uh, I'm probably going to end up playing a little more Space Cat just to see if I can get a little further in it. I mean, maybe even get like a full gameplay video that I can show you guys. Because, you know, like I said, despite despite some of the little weird things I was having with the controls, it, it is fun. You know, I did have some fun with it. And as an old school star. Fox fan, it was really cool to see a Star Fox style experience come to the XB1, even if it's in this form. In any case, uh, once again, my name is Zmanzilla, and if you haven't already, I do hope you choose to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out some of my other videos there. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. That's Zemanzilla's going to hook you up.